Breen is the one indispensable man that brought about the code. Hayes would have been quite happy not to even enforce the code. He was a figurehead. He worked for the studios. They all did, including Breen. But when Breen got a job in the Hayes office, what he did was he used that. And at the same time, he, he was in that place. He also wrote speeches for Catholic clergy and used his connections with Catholic clergy to help start the Legion of Decency, which was a Catholic group that raided films and told Catholics whether they can go to the movies or not. And then he used the existence of the Legion of Decency in order to present himself to Hayes as the one man who can mediate between the Legion and between the studios. And in so doing, he gave himself a lot of power. He gave himself total veto power over anything that the studios wanted to put out for 19 of the next 20 years. If you wanted a movie, you had to go through Breen. This, this guy was the, the closest thing you can have to like a minister of propaganda in the United States for 19 out of 20 years. It's astounding. And the guy was an anti-Semitic maniac on top of it. I mean, this is, this is like a horrible chapter. It's, it's amazing. I mean, you look at this guy's writing, and you, real, you realize that this guy was the, an incredible anti-Semite and, and a, a complete bore. As, 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 is that the word? Anyway, you, know, you, you look at this guy's writing, and you realize this guy was a complete anti-Semite. You read his correspondence also, and you realize that he had just, I mean, he, had, he called, you know, Zola, he, had, he had bad things to say about Zola. He had bad things to say about uh, Tolstoy. He was, a, he was a complete slob. And this guy was running movies for 19 out of 20 years. It's, it's horrifying. It's, it's really, it's disgusting. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> can you spell out the restrictions of the code? How the code would prescribe anything containing, and I'm quoting here, anything containing vulgarity, profanity, nudity, excessive violence, illegal drugs, adultery, sex perversion, white slavery, racial mingling with movies. That's, yeah. of course, the quote from your book. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, under the code, you couldn't show lustful kissing, lustful embracing. You also couldn't present any kind of illicit love that is non-married love in a way that was uh, in any way attractive. So what it comes down to is under the code, the only thing that you could possibly show in, in a love story under the code is like two ugly married people waving to each other from across the room. I mean, it's really, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, now, uh, obviously, you can get around it a little bit, but, in, you know, it, uh, Joseph Breen had a correspondence with Selznick, and he was saying that in Anna Karenina, uh, Frederick March and Greta Garbo should not have any love scenes. And Selznick said, you, I'm very hard-pressed to figure out how I'm supposed to do the story of Anna Karenina without Vronsky and Anna Karenina touching each other. How am I supposed to do this? So, you know, the, the guy, you know, this is, it, so it's really, it's, imp it's an impossible situation. Obviously, they had to show some contact, but all the time they had to make it really, they had to make it really pay, and usually who paid was the woman. Uh, do you want to give any examples from films like uh, Queen, like, uh, Queen Christina or Three on a Match? Well, Queen Christina is a close call. Uh, Queen Christina was made late in the pre-code period, and when Joseph Breen did not have the power that he eventually got. Now, anybody who has seen pre uh, Queen Christina knows that this is an extremely risque movie and, and also a very humane movie. It's about a, mo about a woman who, I'll, I'll say this again, are we, are we okay on the tape? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what is it? Queen Christina is one of the close calls in cinema history. Now, it's, it, and it's one of the best films made in the entire period. It's, it's Garbo playing a bisexual queen who falls in love with a guy and, and, and who, while well, she's just, uh, dressed as a man, and then she reveals herself as a woman, and they spend three days together in bed. It's, it's very sophisticated stuff. Breen did everything he could to make sure that this film was cut to ribbons. He tried before he had the power to do it. And he wanted to cut. If you've seen the film, it's amazing what he wanted to cut. He wanted to cut all the good scenes. He wanted to cut from the point that they meet at the end, her and her future lover, to the point where they're eating grapes. Now, I don't know, if you haven't seen the movie, you don't know what this is, but you, basically he wanted to gut the movie. And when you read the correspondence and you read what he wanted to cut, your blood runs cold because this is a wonderful movie. And it's one of the most sophisticated exa uh, examinations of, of uh, sexual identity and one of the most humane films that Hollywood ever made, much less just made in this era. And you have this, this clown trying to destroy it. Now, fortunately, at this time, he, didn't ha he did not have the power to do it. So he lost that battle. But he won the war about four or five months later because he was able then to impose his incredibly narrow vision of life and morals and art on, on uh, you know, American cinema. 
You want to talk about it? Sure. So you want to ask So what did Garbo do to get Queen Christina made? Why did she want it made? Uh, well, Garbo felt very strongly about making Queen Christina, and she used that as leverage in order to make – well, Garbo – Garbo felt very strongly about making Queen Christina, and what she did was she used that as leverage with MGM, who wanted her to resign for another contract. And she said, "Okay, I'll resign if we do Queen Christina." Okay. Uh, how did she shape the picture itself? I mean, did it arrive fully formed without her? Well, uh, Garbo had her good friend uh, Salka Viertel write it, and uh, you know, it's about a, a Swedish bisexual uh, monarch. And uh, which was kind of like what Garbo was, and uh, she was the queen of the movies. <laughs> That's the only difference.